Hey, this is Jeff, and this is the day one video for the Viking Expeditions Antarctic Explorer trip on Viking Octantis. And before I dive into day one, there's actually a lot of prep work that you have to do prior to day one. I want to cover that because it's important. And I want to start off by saying that you are definitely going to want to buy a folder, an old fashioned school folder for all the paperwork and printouts that you're going to need for the first couple days of travel. I was surprised, we were surprised when we got to the Buenos Aires airport that everybody, all the Viking cruisers had a folder full of paperwork. So go ahead and get one now and get that over with. Another important item that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind in the weeks leading up to the trip is to always be checking your My Viking Journey website. So that's just myvikingjourney.com. You're gonna to wanna to log in there regularly in the weeks before the trip or when you get emails from Viking telling you to do so. The important areas are before you go and you're going to want to check your pre-cruise embarkation requirements there. There, You're going to want to go through the information for your cruise area, the guest information. You're going to want to fill out all that guest information stuff. You're going to want to take the health survey when the time comes. You're going to want to fill out the comfort check-in, and then that's going to be emailed to you once you fill it out. So you want to print it out, stick it in your folder, or if you're comfortable with it, have it on your phone because you're going to need it. Then you're also going to want to keep an eye on your email and on snail mail as the trip date gets closer because you're going to get, we received a lot of important information from Viking notices, reminders, checklists, we got the package with our luggage tags, our little Viking stickers that you wear at the airport so if you're being picked up by them at the airport. So keep an eye on all that and keep on top of it. It's a lot of stuff to do, but it's important to really keep focused on that in the weeks before you leave. One of the other things you're going to want to do in the weeks beforehand, and you'll receive a notice from Viking on this, is to order your complimentary clothes via the Ship to Shore Traveler website. So that's going to be your parka your parka liner, your rental boots, and your pants. Of those, you'll be keeping the parka and the parka liner, um, and all of those items that I just described are gonna be delivered to your stateroom and waiting for you when you arrived. Now, this may have changed. I've heard rumors that this changed from the first cruise because there were a lot of people who had the wrong size of things. So we all had to go down and trade them out, and it was a large line. So they may be doing things differently, but for us, they were delivered to our stateroom and we tried them on in our stateroom. And if there was any problems with them, we were able to go tra tra trade them out. So that's not a big problem. Then you'll also want to, on the Ship to Shore Traveler site, you can order any additional add-ons that you want to purchase yourself. And these can include things, there's a recommended list from Viking, but things like sock liners and heavy, thick socks, I'll, I'll tell you a tip right off the bat that the sock liners through the through that ship to shore traveler site were thin. I ordered some additional ones from Amazon and they were much better and we ended up switching to those and not using the ones that we had ordered online. Then there's glove liners and gloves. Those were great. We ordered the ones straight off of the ship to shore and they, we liked those a lot. The Helly Hansen thermal pants and thermal shirt we got the recommended two of each of those, and that was a good call. We liked those. We got the recommended neck gaiter. We also bought the recommended cap that has the ear flaps and the brim on it. My tip is don't get that. We didn't like it after we went out on our first special operations boat. The brim gets in the way of your eyesight. Our hats were both too big for us, and there's no trading those in. So we ended up going to the Viking store on the ship and buying some very expensive caps from Viking, which worked out great. So just get some, uh, some regular caps and bring those, and those will be great. Uh, my wife asked me to relate to you that the Helly Hansen items for women run small, so take that into consideration. We also bought some extra stuff on our own, and I'll just give you some advice based on that. We bought floatable camera pouches. We saw a bunch of other people on the trip who had them. Honestly, 
they were a lot of trouble to work with with the gloves and glove liners. So I ended up having to take our glove line, gloves and glove liners off a lot during rib boat rides and during special op boat rides. And it became a pain. And after the first couple of days, we just ditched the camera pouches and used our cameras, you know, straight up in our hands. I will give you a warning. At the end of the trip, we talked to somebody who lost their cell phone on a kayak trip. So you, you take that risk if you don't use a camera pouch that's a floatable camera pouch with the neck strap on it. So you have to make that decision on your own. Overall, the items that we purchased on Amazon on our own were the thicker sock liners, good idea. The floating phone cases, didn't end up using them long term. We bought a box of N95 masks, which we call the duck masks, which worked out pretty well. We liked them because they keep the mask off your face. We bought some hand heater packs that you can shove in your gloves, never used them. Brought a bunch of them with us, never used them. We bought a nice selfie stick with a remote control, never used it. It was just too awkward to use it. We just ended up using our camera straight up. The next item that you're going to want to do for prep is to install the Verify app on your phone. And this lets you confirm your COVID vaccinations, your, your two vaccinations and your booster. It's a fairly involved process. Uh, Viking sends you a nine step email on how to install it, how to use it, how to print the results and keep them. You're going to want to print those out, stick them in your folder and have them because you will need the Verify information on your trip. Another, the next item is a medical assessment. Viking's going to email you and tell you that you have to get a signed medical assessment, assessment by your physician that basically says that your physician agrees that you're in a physical condition that is acceptable for a excursion such as this to Antarctica. It is a little bit more physically demanding, some, particularly some of the offshore excursions. So uh, you will have to think about that and do it in a timely manner depending upon how responsive your doctor is so make sure you do that early enough to get that back and then you have to load that up to their website and get a confirmation email back that you've been approved. The next thing you need to line up is a PCR COVID test that has to happen within I believe 48 hours of your first travel so you want to find a place reliable a reliable place in advance that can get give you the test within 20 48 hours and get it back to you in, in time for you to leave. We had a hard time finding this. We ended up paying $250 each to get our results back expedited so that we had them in time to leave. And it's kind of nerve wracking because you really don't know if you're going on the trip all the way up until about 24 hours before you leave based on the results of this test. Next, you have to fill out the Argentina sworn declaration form. Couple of tips on that. It is in Spanish. You want to switch your browser and have it translate it to English. You do not want to use a Chrome browser. If you're a, a Android user or you're doing this on a PC, do not use Chrome. Chrome has problems with this Argentinian website. So if you're on a Mac, you're going to want to use Safari. If you're on a PC or on an Android phone, you're going to want to use the Microsoft Edge browser. Both of those work fine, but you'll get a lot of problems if you try to use Chrome. You'll get the results of that emailed to you. Again, print it out, stick it in your folder. You're going to need it for sure. Finally, you're going to want to install the Viking Voyager app on your phone. This is Viking's app, and you'll use it a lot during the trip to check your schedule, to book things, to look at your Viking daily if you're out and about and you don't have the printout with you. It just comes in really handy, so you're going to want to make sure you get in in advance when you have a good internet connection at home. So that concludes the prep work. Now we're actually at day one. Day one is 100% a travel day. For us, we used Viking Air Plus to book our air through Viking, which was nice because there was a lot of change-ups in the week leading up to the trip. Uh, they had some problems with particular destinations and flight crews because of COVID, and, and Viking did some change-arounds and ended up doing a chartered flight and then the chartered flight changed because the charter company, I believe, went out of business at the last minute. So there was a lot of changes. It was nice to be going through Viking Air Plus because they took care of it and coordinated it with us. We, for the flight, dressed in layers because we knew we were going to be doing a long, all day long, overnight flight. And sometimes it gets cold on the plane. We left Orlando 
our home airport on basically day zero. Uh, then we changed planes in Houston and then flew overnight to Buenos Aires and we landed at 9.30 a.m. on day one in Buenos Aires. We were greeted at the airport by the typical fantastic Viking people who stand there with the lollipops or the, or the clipboards and direct you everywhere you need to go. They gather us all up. Uh, put us on a bus to take us to our hotel where we had to stay overnight, and that was nice. They had a uh, they had a guide, a local native guide on the bus, who told us a lot about Buenos Aires and Argentina on the trip. Had a bunch of great stories about high inflation, high unemployment. Told us how the money exchange worked. Just a lot of great information there. So definitely listen in on that. Upon arrival at the Hilton, which is a nice hotel in downtown Buenos Aires. We gathered our luggage up, which they pulled off the bus and segmented off to the side. Again, they had a very smooth process at the Hilton. They, they shuttled us through the check-in process, took us to a Viking check-in desk where we got some information from them. They then directed us up to the second floor where we went to a room and got a, immediately got a nasal swab COVID test. And then we were sent to our room for the night you're not supposed to leave your room at that point based on the test. You don't actually get contacted with the results of this test. So, and in fact, no news is good news. If you don't get a phone call in your room that night, you've passed the test and everything is great. You are broken up into groups based on ribbons that you're given when you arrive at the hotel, colored ribbons that you put on your luggage. And so there's a message board in the lobby that tells you when you're supposed to meet the next morning very early based on your ribbon color. We were in the 4.30 a.m. group meeting to catch our bus to the airport. The first group was at 4 a.m., so we were actually lucky. We weren't the first group. They have a, a simple breakfast there available for you at four, starting at 4 a.m., so you can come down and grab some free breakfast from them. And that's basically it. That's the end of day one. We're on our way to the airport. Uh, on the morning of day two, and we'll pick that up in the next video. Look forward to talking to you then.